So once you've built your React app, how do you actually get it live and deploy it somewhere on the internet? Well, if it's just a completely static front end, then you can use something like GitHub Pages to actually host that for you. But what about if you've got some kind of backend service like a Node script or an Express app that you want to interact with with your React app? We well, can't do that with GitHub Pages, but if you use a service like Netlify and use their functions ability, then you can run some backend code and combine it with your React app. So in this tutorial, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take a previous project that we built that had a small node backend, and we're going to convert that into a Netlify function and then actually deploy it to Netlify and get it live. So let's take a look at that project and see how you would convert the existing node backend into a Netlify function. Okay, so what we're going to do in this tutorial is take a previous React app that we built that had a small node backend uh, to be deployed on the Netlify service. So the front end of the app can be built and deployed on Netlify without any problems because it's easy to host static files on there. But when it comes to the back end, it actually needs to be converted to Netlify functions, which actually mirror AWS Lambda functions in order to also host the back end of the app. So the app I've chosen is the recipe search app that we did a few weeks ago. And if you didn't see that tutorial, basically it's just a simple search box here. And if you type in a particular recipe item and search for it, uh, what's actually happening in the background is we're making a request to a node service which is really just a proxy endpoint, which actually calls out to another API service from a provider called Recipe Puppy, and then returns the data to our React app. So what we're going to be doing is converting the backend server into Netlify functions, updating our React app to make use of the Netlify functions, and then also deploying it to Netlify and making the whole app live. Okay, so let's get started. Let's head on over to Visual Studio Code to start making our changes to the server. So in the original tutorial that we did, uh, we had this server.js file, uh, which as you can see, just basically creates a simple HTTP server, which takes in a request from the React front end and then basically processes it and sends a second request via the Axios package to the Recipe Puppy API. So this will make our job really simple because we've only got this one endpoint to actually update and change. But if you did have your own more complex app, for example, running with Express, then you would just go through and repeat this process for each of the endpoints that you've got, converting each endpoint into a separate Netlify function. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just create a new folder in the root of the project uh, to hold our Netlify functions. So we'll have a folder called .netlify and inside there, we've got another folder called functions. And I'm just going to move this server.js file into that functions folder. And I'm going to rename the file itself uh, to something more meaningful. And we'll just say it's recipes and we're getting recipes. So recipes dash get. Or we could use get dash recipes, for example. Okay, so with the file renamed, uh, we're just going to uh, remove a lot of the code that we had in the previous example. Uh, and that's because we don't really need to create our own HTTP server here to run the proxy. We're just going to create a function that will run each time the user enters something into the search box and hits the search button in the React app. So we can get rid of most of this because we don't need it. Uh, the only thing I will keep is Axios because we're still going to be using that to actually send uh, the request to the Recipe Puppy API. So let me just close this server variable down for the moment and get rid of all this because we don't need that either. So the syntax for your Netlify function is just to have one export from the file or module and that export has to have a property name of handler and I'm going to make this a sync for our example here. So I can use the await keyword inside of our function and Basically, anything that's inside of this function here is what is going to run when this particular Netlify function is triggered from the app. And there are two parameters available to us in this handler function. And the one that we're really interested in is the event parameter, because that has all the information about the uh, HTTP event that has triggered this particular function. So in the previous tutorial, when we created the server, we took the whole URL and then worked out what the uh, search query parameter was that had been requested on that URL, and then passed that to the recipe puppy API, as you can see here. So all we need to do really is recreate that uh, within our new Netlify function in this handler export up here. So I'm going to create a new variable called search. And on the event object, we get a property called query string parameters. 
that will actually give us an object that has all of the query string params that have been passed in. So we can just access the search parameter, which is essentially what we were doing here when we called this uh, decode params function and, and try to get the the query parameter with the name of search. Okay, so we can just copy this uh, variable here to get the target URL for recipe puppy. And that's all the information we actually need to make our proxy request. So we can then just use Axios here to actually just uh, send that request uh, to the API endpoint. So axios.get and then it's target URL. And then when we're finished with our function and we want to return something to the user, uh, you can see here we had to write the uh, headers back to the actual uh, HTTP request and then end it with the data that had been retrieved from uh, the recipe per API. And we're going to do a similar thing here, but it's a lot simpler. All we need to do is say return an object uh, status code 200, as we did down here. And again, the body will just basically be a stringified version of the response and the property on the response object from Axios that has all the data is called data, so we'll say response.data. So if the call that Axios makes to the recipe puppy API is good, then we'll basically be returning this object here, and the body of the request will be the data that uh, has been returned from that endpoint. Okay, so uh, let's not forget to actually catch any errors here as well. So if we do get any errors, we can return another object that has a status code and we'll use 500 for internal server error because if we've got to this point, then something's probably gone really badly wrong. Uh, but we can also just uh, JSON stringify the error as well just to let the front end React app know what's gone on there. Okay, so we can pretty much just get rid of all of this next. We don't need that, but that was the previous way of actually uh, setting up the proxy endpoint. Uh, but what we've done here is just recreated that same code as a Netlify function. And once we've configured our React app, this will actually get called every time the user makes a new search on the front end. Okay, so we can actually get this function to run locally as well. So whilst you're developing your app, you can actually uh, install a package which will imitate this function being run on the Netlify service. And to do that, we need to install a package and do a bit of configuration. And the package we're going to install is called Netlify Lambda. So if we say npm install netlify-lambda, and this package will actually help us build the functions and deploy them to Netlify as well. So it's a really useful package to have. Um, but we just need to create one configuration file in here for Netlify itself. Uh, and that's netlify.toml. And I'm just going to paste in this configuration here, which is basically just giving some information to Netlify on how we should build our functions and what to do when they're being published. So if we save that configuration file now, and just to make things easier for us to get our Netlify functions running locally, I'm going to create a new entry in our package.json scripts to actually run Netlify Lambda for us. So here I've got uh, the previous script that we had was API serve. So I'll just edit that one. So what we're going to do instead of running that server script that we had in Node before is have netlify lambda run its serve command. And we just tell it where it's going as well. So netlify functions is the folder where we stored the script for our function that we want to run. So if we just save that. Okay, so let's test out this endpoint and see if it's working okay. So we'll say npm run api colon serve. And you can see what that's done is actually built our function for us, and that should be ready for us to run on port 9000. So directly in our browser, we can actually call that endpoint. So if we navigate to localhost 9000, and then the function we've got there is called recipes get, and we can pass in a search parameter of something. And what that should do is actually call the function that we've created, which in turn will make the secondary call to the recipe puppy API, and then return the data from that endpoint. Okay, there you go. So you can see this is the local address for our Netlify function, and this is the results from the Recipe Puppy API. So our function is configured and working as we expected, but we actually need to configure the React app to actually use this function now, uh, because if we go into the code uh, for the React app, you will see that uh, the fetch call that actually did the job of retrieving this data for the React app before is still pointing to the old endpoint that we had set up, uh, which was being served by that node server script. So we need to point this to the function that we've just created, but it isn't just as simple as pointing it to the uh, local host address, because when we actually build this function for Netlify, it won't be able to find that. Uh, so we need to do a little bit of 
configuration of the React app so that it works in both environments. Uh, so let me just go over to where we had uh, the React app running and just uh, stop it from running. Okay, so we're going to install a package first of all, uh, which is the HTTP proxy middleware package. And this will just help us actually uh, make those requests to the function in both environments. Uh, so with that installed, we create a new file within our actual React app. So we call that setup proxy.js. The rest of this project is actually TypeScript, but you can use either JavaScript or TypeScript depending on your needs here. So this setup proxy file is a special script that's run when you have a, a, an app that's been created with create react app, and it will just help us actually proxy those requests from the front end to the Netlify function. Okay, so we basically just import that package that we had a moment ago, that we installed a moment ago. So HTTP proxy middleware. And then we just have a default export from this file, which is essentially just a function. And that function takes one argument, uh, which is app, and we say app.use, and then we call this uh, proxy middleware that we've actually imported. And we say we want to use the functions folder that we have, and we pass that an object as a second argument to that, and we say the target is actually HTTP localhost 9000. And then there is a path uh, rewrite property. And we're basically going to put a bit of regex in here to match the folder where our Netlify functions are. And then we just pass that a blank string. So don't worry if that looks a little bit confusing. Uh, you can actually just copy and paste that into your projects if you need to. There's some examples online or you can take the one from this repository. But essentially this is just making sure that any of your calls from your front end React app are being mapped correctly to the Netlify functions which are going to be generated. Okay, so that is the proxy setup. Uh, what we can now do in our app.tsx file is instead of actually uh, calling this endpoint here, what we can do is we can rewrite this, point directly to the Netlify functions folder. So we'll say uh, folder is .netlify and there's a folder inside there called functions. And the function that we've created is called recipes-get. And of course, we want to leave the uh, query parameters as they are, because that's what's going to get passed to the function and run the request for us. So I think that is all we need to do now. So if we uh, rerun our React app with npm run start. So let's open up our dev tools here so we can see the network request. And let's just search for another item. So we just search for fish and we've got some results. And you can see the endpoints being called which is different from the uh, node service that we had uh, to start off with. And here's the results that have been proxied from the recipe puppy API. And if we go over and look in Visual Studio Code uh, at our terminal, uh, you should be able to see here in the terminal that's running the Netlify Lambda service that we've made some uh, requests to the Netlify function itself. Okay, so the app is working as it was before, but now we're actually using the Netlify function, but we're only using it locally. Uh, we actually want to uh, deploy this uh, to Netlify so it's actually live, so we can share it with other people as well. So there's just one thing we need to configure in our package.json here. So uh, the script we're going to be running within Netlify to build our project is just npm run build which as you can see at the moment is going to build the React app okay, but it won't actually build the functions using the Netlify Lambda service. So we need to add an additional build command in there. And one really simple way of doing that is to actually just add it into the build script here. So the uh, command we need to run is netlify-lambda again, but this time we're going to run build. I we still need to pass it the path to where the functions are, so netlify uh, forward slash functions. And then once that's done, if we actually want to build the React app as well, uh, we can just do double ampersand. And once the first command to build the Netlify functions is done, it'll then move on and build the React app as well. Uh, so if we save that, we can actually test that out locally and just make sure it's working okay. So if we say npm run build, you'll see we've got a, a step to build the actual Netlify Lambda services. Uh, and then just after that, it will then build the React app as well. Okay, so to publish it to the Netlify service, what I'm actually going to do is um, create a new branch uh, so that this can be built from there, just so I don't affect the original project. So if anyone's watching the previous tutorial, they're not going to get confused as why the code's different. Uh, so let's add all of our changes that we've made so far. And we'll just say convert uh, to a Netlify function for the commit message. Uh, and then I'm gonna push that up to that branch on GitHub. Okay, so everything we've done in this tutorial so far has been pushed up to GitHub. Uh, so what we can actually do now is go over to the Netlify service 
And if you haven't used Netlify before, all you need to do is head on over to the site and sign up for an account. Uh, you'll be asked to connect your GitHub account and then you can create a new site based on the repositories that you've got in your GitHub account. Uh, so here I've selected the React Recipe TypeScript tutorial, which is where we just pushed our code to. And if we go down here to the configuration for the site, uh, you should see that we've got all of the branches. Uh, so Netlify is the new branch that we've just created. So we're going to actually be building and deploying our site from there. Uh, and as you can see, the build command, as I mentioned before, is set to npm run build, which should run the Netlify Lambda build code. And then after that, build the React app. And that is what is going to get deployed to this particular site. So if we click the deploy button at the bottom there, uh, in just a moment or two, it should build the site. And this will build the React app and also the Netlify functions. Okay, and once that's gone through, you'll see you've got your URL of your Netlify app. And if we just uh, go and visit that, we can see our React app is up and running. And hopefully if we do a search for something, you can see that in our network tab, we've got the uh, call to the Netlify function. Now you can see the URL is slightly different, but it's actually still calling the same function that's been deployed. And we've got our results from our proxy call to recipe puppy. And of course, we've got all our results on the page as well. I think the recipe puppy service uh, blocks the images from cross origin requests, uh, which is why we're not seeing any of the images of the actual recipes themselves. But other than that, everything else seems to be working pretty nicely. Okay, so there's one of our React apps with a node backend uh, converted and deployed to Netlify using Netlify functions. So just to recap what we did, we converted the existing node service into a Netlify function. We installed the Netlify Lambda package and configured that to actually run the function locally for us. And then by using the HTTP proxy middleware package, we can proxy the requests from our React app to the Netlify functions locally and also capture those in our build process as well. And once you've got all that set up, all you need to do is head on over to Netlify and build your project from their console. So hopefully you've seen it's quite easy to actually publish your full stack React apps to the Netlify service. I appreciate there's a lot going on in the setup that we've done today. So if you are confused about anything, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer that for you. But that brings us to the end of this tutorial. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.